Week one, bilingual readers. What is different about teaching reading to bilingual students? Let's start by reading some English text. Read aloud with me. Once you learn to read, you will be forever free. Frederick Douglass. Reading is the sole means by which we slip involuntarily, often helplessly, into another skin, another's voice, another soul. Joyce Carol Oates. If you are a monolingual English speaker, most likely you pronounced the words correctly, read with fluency, understood the meaning of the text, and you may have had some background knowledge on the authors. Let's try again. Read aloud with me. Trig, Fan, and Chen. Trig and Fan are mites. Chen is a bledge. Most mites become bledges when they burble, but Trig and Fan didn't burble, they yolanted instead. Chen, Zell nude outside Trig and Fan's nod, Zin, Treg, and Fan, Sevica, Ploried Chen and said, See Zell newing Trig and Chen will blurble rently. Then Chen kneeled maniliously. <laughs> That was challenging for me. I struggled with pronunciation and fluency, and I understood that there were some characters who may have had a problem, but I was a bit lost. This is what reading is like for bilingual readers who are struggling. Somewhat exhausting, confusing. Maybe they get some parts of the reading, but they missed important parts as well. There are differences between monolingual and bilingual readers in, learn in reading. Bilingual readers bring additional quality to your classroom. They bring multiple languages, mixes of languages, and language registers. They bring bicultural identities and unique cultural experiences. These additional assets influence how they will learn to read in your classroom. A monolingual reader is faced with the task of learning to read. This is a formidable task in itself. A bilingual learner may have triple the work. They need to learn to read, while negotiating in both English and other languages and negotiating the culture of mostly monolingual classrooms. Sadly, the Common Core framework was developed with monolingual readers in mind. Other languages and cultural relevancy are not highlighted in this framework. There are some strong language components, like focusing on comprehension, oral language development, and vocabulary. But what happens when a bilingual reader who struggles is placed in the world of the Common Core standards? Quite often, the student is given interventions that focus on the reading foundation strand. This includes work on phonics, word recognition, phonemic awareness. Reading foundation instruction often isolates skills and removes the act of reading from real texts and stories and communicative tasks. This is a serious problem for bilingual learners. Remember, bilingual learners are not just learning to read. They're learning to negotiate languages and cultures as well. A rich language context and cultural connections cannot be removed from learning to read. So what am I saying? Don't bother with foundations? That's crazy talk. No, what I'm saying is we need to put phonics in its place and not let it rule the lives of readers who struggle. This quote sums it up. Care must be taken to ensure that the teaching of phonics does not displace other activities which support the language and literacy development of bilingual children. So if not phonics, then what? First, carry on with balanced literacy and culturally rich, rich practices as your foundation. Secondly, amplify opportunities to talk in your classroom. Build talk and oral language development in all activities. Reading floats on a sea of talk. And even in this strong literacy environment, some bilingual readers still may struggle. Do not reach for the reading interventions that focus on isolated skills practice. Instead, reach out to practices that we term language rich. These language rich approaches bring in culture and authentic language. You do not need to throw away your traditional intervention plans, but hopefully you will start to consider other ways to accelerate the reading progress of your bilingual learners. Thank you.